if you're listening to this right now, get yourself on to the patreon.com forward slash general banter podcast where you'll hear the 12 pods of Christmas in its entirety. Okay. We've got all sorts of guests, man. It's going to be absolutely lit. You will see promo clips coming out for it. But um, yeah, patreon.com slash general banter podcast, new podcast every day from 25th of December to the 5th of January. Where else would you get it, man? I don't know the fuck. Where else would you fucking get it? And the Blender Lost tapes are going up just before Christmas as well. So do you know what? Squeeze both my tits into a latte. Will you fuck up, dude? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the General Banter Podcast. Uh, it's been a while for a public one, hasn't it now? Oh, aye. The General Banter Podcast with Colin Jettis. Oh, it's like we never left. Here we are uh, on a Monday a very exciting day today my guest is our mccann and he will seamlessly glide into shot and he's wrecked seamless. The, he's wrecked the gaff seamless he, he smashed <laughs> into the table that was, that was my gun hitting that <laughs> <laughs> i can't help him both that'd be great if you're an online pt stop what you're doing right now guys is your gun nearly <laughs> knocking mcdonald's cups off the table Subscribe to my fucking YouTube and I'll give you real fat loss tips. Sign up to my Get the Gunt Off for Christmas <laughs> package. Uh, every other PT is fucking retarded. I know exactly how to lose. They're going to say exercise and calorie deficit, but I'll reward that. Yeah. And I'm the one that you invest in. Yeah. Buy it off me. Just whack a few bowls of cornflakes in and you're good to go. No, cereal is the devil. Cereal is the devil. Too much sugar in the on yolk. There's no protein in a cornflake. <laughs> what do you want to... <laughs> Fucking bull testicles for lick the side of a viscount and hit the weights. No, no, no biscuits allowed. Get nope. them in the bin. Oats, overnight oats. Fuck that shit too. Have you ever had an overnight oat? I've, I've had a you know fruit together in half an hour oat, but it's rotten. A what? Threw it together in half an hour. Uh, fuck the overnight. I don't know who has time for that. Meal prep, bro. What are you? Who the fuck has their life together that much? Who has time for waiting around for half an hour for oats to be made? Nah, I don't. I don't do any of that. Half shit. an hour for oats, bro. They take about twenty seconds. No, I bought it. I bought it from a shop. It was like a pre-made one. You bought food from a shop. Aye, they, you've they, changed. They, they, they'll overnight out. You know what I mean? Inspired. Don't worry about it. And uh, stinking. Aye. Nah, I can't. I've had some nice ones, you know, but they're usually the ones that are full of shit. Well, any of the like healthy alternative shit, you're just like this. Just tastes like you know, this could be really nice, but they've took all the crack out of it. Yeah, or they're just they say protein, but then it's it's got Nutella on the top. Like a fake away? Fuck that shit. Oh, I'm good at a fake away. I hate Like, just get like, like if you're going to a Chinese, just get like something like a chicken black bean boiled rice, you know, chicken foo young. It's their little special. You know, you get an omelet. Get an omelet. Um, no, I can do a good fake away. Cause what do you do? I'll do like a sort of fake fried rice type scenario uh-huh. where I do whatever, whatever's in it, whatever might be in it, beef, chicken, the veg. And then I bust an egg in there and I make like that. And then I just put the, the microwave rice in or else I've just cooked basmati. Yeah, so you are a chef. And I put it, it in so. and then you put you put the correct sauce on it now. Am I right? Am I right, guys? Oh, uh, you know, you put on a wee fucking drop of like, uh, you know, like sesame oil or uh, just a wee bit, you know, give uh, it that taste. I've and, been fond of the sesame oil. Now. And a wee bit of dark soy and it looks stinking. It looks like a dirty fried rice. You know what I mean? Yeah. But who am I? Gordy Ramsay. <laughs> Just fucking it up. Put the headphones on there, you slack. What are you going to show me? This is a show coming up. Oh, we're not plugged in. What do we need? No, they are, eh? Ah, fuck my arse. We're, we're plugged in. Ah! And as if nothing ever happened, we're back after plugging in the laptop. for Back in the room. It's like a teenage disco in here. It is. <laughs> Two of us wearing fucking cool water out of the thing. <laughs> Get the jeep on, lad. I'm just showing you, um, is P.O. a big man for the jeep? Oh, I Loved oh, it. Oh, the knicker oh, dropper. I. Just as I. <laughs> the knicker dropper glory. Uh, uh, Ch- have you, did you watch the last series of Milf Manor? I have never been exposed to the show in my life. It's on TLC. Uh, your of course man, it's TLC. Your man enjoys a, a show about midgets and Kardashians. My little loves and I think TLC puts out. Your man will be all over this, ready? Fine. <laughs> Given me some curveballs. I think it's. I can see <laughs> your fucking. I, fucking <laughs> I can see your fucking curveballs slopping over your fucking bikini. My time to find love. I was married for 14 years. I want to get a chance to do me a little. Young men have much more energy. They think oh, out of the box. I want that. 
especially in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I am in this amazing, beautiful mansion here in Mexico. This is a perfect place to find love. Is it? Welcome to the villa. You're about to embark on a dating experience like none other. Oh, let's go! I have an extremely high libido. Is that too much? I have an extremely high libido. Should I just have said a high libido? Judging by that voice, by high libido, do you mean <laughs> cock and balls? <laughs> I've got an incredibly high libido, and it's fucking uh, Sinead. ready to connect with somebody who doesn't really care how old I am. I'm just looking to have fun. One shocking twist. Here we go. What the hell? It just got real. They're all white. <laughs> but I don't do pasty white motherfuckers. I didn't come here on a goddamn boat. Here, uh, oh. do you know what the twist is allegedly? What's this? That it's their sons. That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> that is out of order. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Sit, I don't think that they're gonna be like, you know, all oh, my sons here. I'm gonna have to fuck them. I think you know they're gonna be trying to get some get some young dick while their son's not gonna bite. As, uh, no, that's and, and vice versa. The so, son, the son's gonna be trying to. You know, slay some fucking wizard slave here. Aye, uh, and your ma's there. Aye, said he hit that. Although, what I would say, be great crack if your ma was there, and you know, at the end of the night, you are kind of having a cup of tea, and she's just slobbering about everyone. I would love that. I'd love the goss. I think she'd be slobbering around the top of some <laughs> cock. More like it. Jesus, no, don't talk about Rizaka like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would just love to sit down and like slobber about everyone of my low. Uh, but besides that, that would be absolute hell. I I'd, be, I'd have to look after the whole time. I wouldn't have time to be uh, getting my fucking dim summed. I'd be making sure she can her osteoporosis is acting up. Yeah, but it'd be like you know you help your ma down some stairs and then you go back to the top of the stairs to help some other bitch down, but you're like holding her ass. <laughs> what's what's amazing? What's amazing is if if that is the crack, like they are their sons. How do they how do they organize that? Like somebody's in on the secret. Maybe the son is in on the secret. Yeah, but I wonder do they. Like, do they actually give the intel to the sons that, like, oh, Some, your ma's on this too? Somebody's going to have to know. How could they keep it secret? That's mad. No, what I will say, I would absolutely watch that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. What's it called? Fucking Milf Manor. Menopause Mansion. Menopause Mansion. <laughs> I'm an extremely high libido. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I think they'd be much better I mean, than that show. M Milf's a, a strong term. Some of them are Some of them are gilfs. Some mm. of them are owl dolls, like, proper yeah. owl Like... I know in porn these days, MILF means you're about 24, like, but... Oh, I Like, I, I, you know, it used to be a fantasy man to book a MILF, and now it's just, that should be the age bracket, I should be right. Yeah. And I've lost out. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, you could be bucking a MILF any time from the age of about 17. Yeah. Depending on what part of Belfast you're in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be fun in Belfast, though, wouldn't it? When that there, the, when, when the fucking thing slides back, and there's like, fuck, Jack, my What are you doing here? Or walking about in the Cookie Monster pre-mark pajamas. How am I... <laughs> That's that thing goes back and you see a load of Lonsdale shoes. <laughs> Just fucking the you, tables covered in amber leaf. I on <laughs> We're here in this beautiful hotel in Coltra. <laughs> what a perfect place to find love. The screen goes back. <laughs> Fuck sake, that's my auntie Denise. They just ran out to Kelly Havlin. <laughs> And someone who's hosting is like, okay, guys, first uh, first task we have today is we're going to choreograph our own line line dance. And then Richie Remo's coming in later to play. Don't be getting up to any tomfoolery. All right, guys, we're going to have a jive off, you know, so uh, select your partner and uh, introducing the musical guest, Derek Ryan. Yeah. Fantastic. It'd be like, as the young guys are out having some sea activities, they're jet skiing. The mothers are back at the mansion slagging off customer service on Facebook. Or <laughs> saying, like, whatever Maz they. I'm trying to get this sold in the marketplace. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> love trying to get rid of those chance of drawers. The guys are out paddle boarding while the moms are at home just fucking bad mouthing someone via memes. <laughs> Calling people snakes via memes. Yeah. Well, the young fellows are out doing a bit of shopping. The mothers are at home using racial slurs. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
They drove all the snakes out of Ireland, but the scene they've landed on this <laughs> island in fucking Mexico, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, fuck. There'd be so many. <laughs> be so many like you know just wobbly tits with a with a dog's footprint tattooed on them. <laughs> <laughs> couple of chinese tramp stamps here uh, there'd just be a, there'd be a load be of lads dream. riding some old doll but he's still got like black air max on yeah <laughs> i got the fucking roly hanging out my <laughs> oh, fuck. i think there'd be I, I actually think there'd be plenty of like uh There'd be couples from, or like, like a mother son combo from here, where they would just be like, crack on, you know. Well, what do you think? What do you think the decent, like, what do you think the max age gap is that you can get away with between like in a relationship? Obviously, some people would say it's different for women and men, mm. as opposed to men and women in a relationship, mm. where it's like maybe, you know, the man can be a bit older, and then tends to be that women are judged a bit more if they're the older one in the relationship. Mm. What do you think the gap is that you can go without it getting like two? I don't know if there's a finite number on it. Yeah, you know, over depends a certain, on the people. Over a certain age, it does. I don't think it matters too much. Obviously, I'm obviously above legal, but I mean, like, if if a, it just depends what what league you're in in your life. You know mm. what I mean? If you were a fucking nineteen year old going out with like a thirty six year old, hit me up. Uh, no, it's like. <laughs> You know, it might look... I think it's just like, it does it seem no, okay? Because at a certain point, if the ke- relationship keeps going, it's just going to be like, okay. Yeah. You know, at a certain point, it'll look like some some dude who's like 30 with with some old woman who your, people are going to think is your man. Yeah, well, there's 19-year-olds that have like their own startups and shit. And then there's, you know, when I was 19, I was fucking going to Shane Raves, you know, so... Yeah, I would have had enough. I still have nothing to offer a thirty-six-year-old woman. True. Yeah. Yeah. Um. There is that. There is that also. You want to get the two-seven free in the Belfast? Like I was watching the pictures. I was watching um, you know that beauty queen and single, mm-hmm. which was shot here, and there was a guy who was like, yeah, and just fucking you know finish uni, trying to figure out what to do, and the girl was she was like thirty something, and she was like, you know, I have my own business and all, like it, it'll be go- it'll be like going out with a child, even though you might be like twenty-five or something, but it's just like. Yeah, you just seem like not as mature. Yeah, you know, but uh, there there is that, and then there is just like this looks weird. At a certain point, it's just got like if you're like a twenty five year old guy and you're gonna have like a thirty five year old woman and she's in good nick and she's hot, fair play. People will be like fair play to you, and then you're like oh we're getting married, and then t- you know as time goes on, you it's just gonna look like somehow low. And the same with the fellas. Yeah, at a certain point, it just looks like what's could you not have met someone your own age? You fucking weirdo. Yeah, and also too, it depends how you age. You know, it does. That's what I mean. Even with a fella, like an older fella, at a certain point, he's just gonna be like, you know, you know, when a girl tries to keep a guy young and he's got the Von Dutch top on, it's all glitter. Yeah, <laughs> and he's got highlights in his hair, and then he's. But then there's just be wee bits sneaking in. You know what I mean? Wee bits of old person shit. Sne- you know what I mean? Like in a real relationship, you'd be like hanging out with this milf, you know, and then you just start getting old people problems. You yeah, know? like Sandra's going in for the hip. Yeah, you know, or like just around the house, there'd be like wee weird things. But it's old people shit. Oh yeah, people, your mate come around up in the fridge for a beer. And be like, why is there prune juice in here? And you be like, this old all can't shed for mo- <laughs> love their money. They don't get any references. They don't even know what TikTok is. No, you know. And then when you're a fella, you're you might be like cool old guy, fancy car, hot young chick. Then you pull up outside someone, you're like, oh Jesus! <laughs> you know, you're getting the ride with an knee brace on, <laughs> like Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> Stone Cold smash his ass, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Come works out anywhere. Have you seen his, his Instagram? Oh, he's the man. Doesn't I matter him. where it is. Guy's like, I'm here, I'm here to 7 Eleven doing a. Like, you pull up in that van, do a fucking workout anywhere. Won't he? He's a mad man. I love him. I just brought dumbbells to a fucking KFC. He's your fitness inspo too, isn't he? I just feel like he's my. If I really worked out, that's what I'd look like. Yeah. A 60 year old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your inspiration these days? Oh fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Anyone that can walk? <laughs> Anyone that doesn't chafe? <laughs> Chafing's still a big issue oh, for you. Jesus, hey, the sun's out there, it's a like game over. I was again watching that beauty queen and single, and this girl's walking down the street, and she's a big tall girl, like a model, and they're like, oh, she's got legs for days. And I was like, I've got legs for days too. That way. <laughs> legs for weeks. Legs, <laughs> legs for weeks. But around. <laughs> Thick, <laughs> thick thighs save save lives, apparently. I have titties for years. Ah, you, you're not telling me like if I was 
in absolute prime shape. <laughs> see, I'd love to see you hop out in Halloween. Some of you with that leather vest in you. You know? Well, God, you know, well. people, people, you know, gir- girls will go to like Slimming World and they're like, what's your goal? And they'll be like, uh, I just want to be able to just fit into the three dress. You know? That'll be me. I want to go to Halloween like that. <laughs> that's when I that's when I know I'm in good shape, when I can pull that look off. <laughs> and just, then He just has his default sentence, like angry oil boy face. <laughs> you know? I some build of a hair, I? <laughs> some build of a hair. But not, not again, not beyond the realms of, you know, he's not he, not crazy. It's not the rock, like. No, he's probably just not going for big tastes before a podcast, like you know. It was a McCrispy when you give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fucking McCrispy. <laughs> you know, the sacrifices have to be made, like. Here, wrestling's gay, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but it's so fun. Uh, uh, <laughs> and most gay things are fun. Uh, like, would you say? Do you have anything that you'd like to achieve this year, Colin? In 2023, do you have any goals or intentions you'd like to set on this podcast? On this podcast? Yeah. Um, I, I I think it's not a specific thing. It's mm-hmm. more of a vibe. Okay. I, you know, and I've, What's I, the vibe we're going I've said this across the board. Like me and Maureen have talked, like, what's your goals in life? I'm like, it's more vibe. Yeah. You know, like, what, what does success mean to you? It means, like, I'm not worrying about things. The house is nice. If I have enough money, if I want to do something crazy, I can do it. Yes. Nice. Chilled. Yeah. Lo-fi. It's a vibe. It's not, like, a specific goal. Yeah, but the vibe for me is um, not be so bogged down with lots of little lad mini things that makes it all a mess. It's kind of more chill, leaving more room for creativity. Okay, and okay. also, also, um, you know, get not ju- literally just stop talking shit and get in better shape and be healthy. Nice. We're, we're eleven pounds down this week. Fuck yeah! Over four, five weeks. Bless. With not a lot of, you know, I'll just, I'll do that. I'll do that maybe for a few more months. Yeah, chip away at it. Get me on down. You know, come back to me in two months. Oh shit, what's he lost? 25, 30? Yeah. Come down to me next one. Skeleton. Next week, let her invest out. Let her in. <laughs> I wish I had a smile. We need, a, we need the Stone Cold music for the Come in the libraries with that. I should have walked on the SAC to that. Smashing two styles again. But that's what it is. Healthy. Mm-hmm. Bit less stressed. Okay. Um, I like this r- room, room for creativity Great Get the bathroom done Nice Yeah What are your dreams And hopes and goals Hopes and dreams and goals uh, Get the visa sorted Move to New York um, Get my student overdraft cleared And uh, yeah I feel you on the vibe thing Just mm. you know It's not like Contentness It's it's not like picking a One goal Because you know Then you get that thing Where you, where you do it And then you go What now Yeah it's more of just general vibes. Yeah. What do you want to feel? How do you want to feel? Yeah. What sort of man do you want to be in 2023? Busy and happy. <laughs> wow. You like that? And well read. Yeah. <laughs> Bag well emptied. Yeah, that's the, What's that's that, what, remember that, that meme that girl be like, I'm fucking urinated, highly caffeinated, and freshly masturbated. <laughs> Wait, what? Who said that? You've seen that now? It's like a famous sound on TikTok. She just says something like, I'm fucking, I'm this, and fr- highly caffeinated, and freshly masturbated, and ready to go. Fair play to her. See, that's got to do it right. Aye. But I get up and go. Starbucks and a f- finger blasting. That's it. Yeah. Morning routine. Aye. It's not too far off mine, actually. <laughs> but it's Nespresso, what I'm wanking to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> the bar brings, brings in a Nest Cafe, and you flick the beanie or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, watching porn on the PlayStation. You can bid it. <laughs> so that's your goals? That's my goals, yeah. Get out there, you know, take an take an out swing at it, you know. Life is finite. We're all gonna die. You know. You might as well enjoy it. I spilled juice there. Nah. Tell us about this, uh you nearly got sucked off on a tube. <laughs> t- t- by, by a big black woman, tell us that one. <laughs> So we were like, my, my mate Spencer said to me, he's like, I've lived in this city for like six years and I've never seen more like strangers just talk to someone in my life as you. Now, it obviously it's because you're foreign or whatever, but like we literally were going to his girlfriend's house party and we get in the train and this black lady was like sitting down beside us. And before we went out, he gave, I goes, can you give me a bit of spray, lad? And he throws a bit of Versace on me. I was like, fuck, that's gorgeous. It's no dupe. And uh, we get in the train. There's no red diesel. And this uh, black lady was sitting down beside, and she was like, "Oh, 
Ooh, somebody smell fine in here. And then uh, I turn around and they have a shower gel out there called Irish Spring. So I just turn and I was like, I was just the Irish Spring, you know. And she goes, oh, smelling like that with that accent? You definitely getting your dick sucked tonight. <laughs> And she was wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she was fitly wrong. Ten minutes walking around the town, you did smell like a fucking Irish spring. What is it weird what they think of Ireland? Oh, it's crazy. I can't wait to go to Ireland and bathe in the springs. But the difference of like fucking like how people see you in England in comparison to America is like night and day difference. Oh yeah, you're an old pig fucking party as soon as you're Oh yeah. Did you watch that SAS Rogue Heroes thing? No, what's that? It's, a, it's made by the same guy that made um, Piggy Blinders. Right. Right. And there's one of the characters called Blair. His real name is Blair Main. Mm -hmm. Like one of the original SAS members. And he's from Newton Arts. Mm -hmm. So he's obviously, you know, big prod in the army, blah, blah, blah. And uh, But as soon as he's over there, he's, he's, his name's Paddy Main. That's what happens. Guy's like the most well-respected mad cunt soldier in the world. And they're like, I'm gonna call you Patty, like, because you're just a little fucking. Literally, that should be a thing. Is how sectarian really are you? Because I had a friend at school who was the kind of same way, like you know, big prod. You know, that was his whole identity. And uh, even if he was in holidays and someone was like, "Where are you from?" Uh, you know, he wouldn't just say Ireland. He'd, he'd make sure to be like, "Oh no, Northern Ireland," and uh, yeah. you know, all this here. And the first night we were in Ibiza, uh, some doll like had a tricolor around him. And he was trying to get worse, so he was just all about it. Tricolor around him. I got a picture of it. It was like, you're a fucking turncoat. You're a turncoat. <laughs> turncoat bastard, you know? Uh, I'll, fuck. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter when there's puss involved. Nothing matters. <laughs> yeah. That's how they should test everybody. Yeah. You know? How much hatred do you really have in your heart? There's like, you're shooting one of them ISIS videos, and the guy's got a machete in his hand. He's got a guy by the head, and yeah. he's like, fucking, Allah, Hakmar, and I here, and they're just like, would you, would you hold on five minutes? To ride this Jew. <laughs> and look. Okay. You know. Throws a knife on the floor. <laughs> oh, fuck. What did I say that the other night in libraries? I was like, this country, like, because, you know, Americans have so much self-confidence. And, like, people kind of give over here shit about how it's a very, like, stay in your own lane country. But I think you kind of need that. Otherwise, you carry on like they do. Well, that's it. Like, I mean we've talked about this before in the podcast we were saying like it's a bad thing over here that sort of small pond syndrome where someone looks like they're making effort and they're like fuck this guy and all yeah but it, you know it does keep you keeps you, you kind of need it because after seeing people out there you do need it because the alternative is like you know you lose the run yourself like i you? said this country could never make a kanye west no nah. because there's not enough jews knocking about you know yeah that's a great line there's like, not enough like that. Not, not enough uh not yeah. enough of a community from the hate here yeah. If Kanye was here, he'd probably just be a really sectarian Catholic. Think so? He'd be going on a tirade against the Protestants, probably, yeah. <sighs> he'd pick somebody. You know? The Traveller. God love him anyway. <laughs> um, who's the closest we have to Kanye West in Northern Ireland? Tom Smith? Probably, yeah. Shout out, Tom. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, Kanye West over here would be like... Do you remember... There used to be videos posted online of a there's a Glasgow Rangers fan, mm -hmm. but he's like a Pakistani fella. Yeah, and he's all like fucking like slagging off, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's embarrassing to have you know. But he's like run down the street and he's like you know literally like fuck the Celtic. Yeah, yeah. Bunch of Indian bastards, <laughs> and everyone's like yeah. He's like I'm learning to play flute this week. The Indian bastards. <laughs> It's embarrassing to have dreams and be from this country. It really is. Like, so, it's embarrassing. Like, wanting to do comedy is a, is a dumb thing. Like, it's dumb to, like, watch a comedian and be like, I want to do that too. Do you remember we talked one time about, like, putting on an American accent and doing your same set? Or was it rapping? I can't remember what we were talking about. No, it was uh, it was a black accent, to be specific. And Oh, we were I, in the I, car, yeah. I do believe if either of us were doing that stadium tour, easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking Chappelle and Rock over here. Yeah. And I seen this motherfucking rainbow. We do every my house. We do and every I said, damn mom. I didn't know my dad was gay. Stand and O. <laughs> Dolls doing cartwheels. <laughs> like my friend, like, oh, this is why I'm embarrassing, right? So we went to I don't know if I was telling you this in one of the phone calls that we while I was away, but there was one night I took my friend Michael to the Stan Comedy Club. No one has more friends that no one else has met than you. 
<laughs> and we were there anyway. And the night before, he came to watch me there, <clears throat> which was unreal because I was upstairs. And as soon as I got off, they were like, do you want to go downstairs and see Chappelle? So we got to watch him run his SNL monologue. Fucking unreal. And uh, the next night, as a, as a way of saying thanks for letting me stay at his. Sucked his dick. <laughs> next best thing took him to the stand the next night paid of the show and the drinks and i was in this chair and i turned him and i was like fuck me this is a wild good chair sir and he's like what are you talking about and i was like it's very comfortable but you can really lean back on it and he's like all right whatever I just think i'm foreign as fuck and then there was a girl on stage chloe leblanc she was called very funny very dark comedian and i leaned back to what laugh mean, what do you mean by dark uh, <laughs> humor <laughs> and uh, she was black lady too no uh, I leaned back and fucking the chair turned to toothpicks like immediately like I broke the seat and you know what's funny there's a clip from the podcast where I said I have an overwhelming fear in my head I'm gonna fa- fall off a bar stool next best thing I fucking broke a chair there's nothing worse and weren't you okay than being no I wasn't <laughs> I think about it once a week I fall back she's in the middle of her set and if I'd have been with you, you'd have been like, get the fuck up for fuck's sake, would you? But because I was with Michael, he's fucking slapping his legs and being like, oh shit, like us here. Why do you think I would be so supportive? <laughs> I'd, be like, I'd be like, world star. Well, you wouldn't be doing what he's doing. He was doing a fucking cartwheel in the lap of the comedy club. <laughs> and then I was like, for fuck's sake, Michael, shut the fuck up. And then he grabs a chair from behind him and I sit in it. But like, I don't even know what she said while she was on stage. Like she definitely referenced it, but the two of us were so tuned out, just trying to get me back in his seat. But, you know, people talk about if you take mushrooms, you'll have an ego death where you just kind of realize you ain't shit. But if you're a fat lad and you break a seat, they'll do the same thing. Like, yeah. you be having a great week. You get a promotion. You know you're in bad nick when you're breaking an American chair? Aye. You know, because they're probably built for some real fucking heifers. Like heifers, yeah. Um, is there many big fat fucks in New York? or? To be, to be honest, not really. No, nah, you got to you gotta go somewhere else to get the real... You know, because it's a very, you know, you have to you have to walk about everywhere in that city. Yeah. Well, there's LA. You could get away with, you know, just being a big fucking beanbag and going from A to B in your car. Mm-hmm. But no, people are... Any other wild stories from when you're out there? Are you allowed to talk about falling in love with everyone? <laughs> everyone that you meet? Um, well, I, I was telling you about one Cody I met, uh. who's also a comedian, uh. and uh, went on a date. Very, very attractive woman. Uh, also very successful. Uh, and uh, He's fucking his way to the top, I, this boy. I, I was like, fuck it, I'll ask her out, you know. And we go to this, like, Irish bar in Manhattan. And, you yeah. know. Play, play the game at home. You know, oh, you, know you, I mean? you got to get the home court advantage, you know. So home I game. go in. And like fucking Tony Soprano walking around this fucking. I'm the, it's me, McCall. <laughs> I'm there early and the doll put us like prime retail it was two seats beside this like open log fire she comes in anyway she's fucking stunning and then i was like jesus christ and the bartender comes over the thickest balamina accent i've ever heard in my life right comes over goes how's it going there folks there's two wee menus for you you want to take a look at the drink specials there you know Patty McGaggy working at- <laughs> literally McGaggy, right really? and then the guy turns to me and does like a bit of a double take and goes, sorry, bye, are you are you Arne McCann? And I turned to her, and this doll's like fucking on legit TV shows and all, and I was like, I get this all the time. <laughs> that was wild. Yeah, I get this all the time. And then uh, he goes, here, I tell you, what's your first round on the house? Don't worry about it. And I was like, this guy's fucking great, right? 12 Jager bombs. And then he turns to me, and I was like, I'll have a Guinness, sure. And then he turns to her, and he goes, what do you have anyway, love? And he go, she goes, I'm not, I'm not drinking. And uh, he goes... All right, you, you take a mineral. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and then he goes, like a cup of squash, cup of squash to you. <laughs> and she turns to me as if to be a like, cup of squash? is he fucking with me here? And how big are fleurons does he take out with you? <laughs> and then right, he sees the confusion in her face and he's like, oh, I'll get out of this one. He goes, jug of the Luton. Do you take a jug of the Luton for the table? <laughs> And I could tell she just wanted the conversation to be over. Yeah. So she said, yeah. And then I knew rightly she didn't know what he said. And then he goes, what flavor? Uh. And, and she goes, uh, do you guys have peppermint? And he uh. was just like, what do you think? Because this is the fucking Ritz Hotel. <laughs> <I love you. laughs> 
I love, I love you find the only bar in New York that was like golf club drinks. <laughs> we drink a vodka and black yarn. Really? Red, di- red diesel? Hell's in lime. Fuck your head. What are you looking? <laughs> Bash Yandy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. But, but, I, but I said that Scabby I- fries <laughs> Take your fucking scabby fries Really Your mouth tastes like An old fanny For next week Full soda Full soda <laughs> My worry Did we take it my worry <laughs> Take anything <laughs> Top water Oh fucking hell Sea water Rain water <laughs> Rain water but I turned him and I was like, because he said to me, he's like, oh, just, you know, I listen to you and uh, you're a podcast and Colin's podcast and all this here, I love it. And I was like, I goes, because he said it reminds him of home. Uh, and I was like, how long have you been here for? Thinking he was just off the boat, like, and he goes, eight years by in the trot. <laughs> and I was like, the Balamina accent is a legit disability. Like, it hadn't shifted one fucking octave. Remember I said to you, like, I'd be on the phone, he was going, I swear to God, Mom, every, every time I fucking order something, I get the wrong thing. Every fucking time. I have another correct order this whole time. What the fuck is pastrami anyway? I don't even know. <laughs> owl ham? You were some fucking owl ham? Is it hickory smoked or what? It's, it's cooked, but it's raw at the same time. Fuck's sake. Uh, but I... It was great. And then, you know, very rom-com. I just, uh, you know, we were just like, ah, oh, this obviously can't go anywhere. And now I'm back in Oma listening to Drake. I was talking to Colin Terrell. You know, he was lives in New York, obviously, and then he was home. And I was like, did you did you fill up on any home comforts? And he goes, it was just all shite. Yeah. He goes, it's just all the shite that you miss. It's not like good food or anything. He no, goes, no, no. Straight in, shitty fish and chips, got a Chinese. Yep. And I'm like, surely you'd get a Chinese in, in Chinatown? No. And Yeah, but the, the, the Irish Chinese is, is a the thing. spice bag. Is a thing, like, isn't it? It is. They should have a different name for it. Because, you know, we've been to some legit Chinese places. You know, when you're eating chicken feet and fucking stinking ribs floating around in some questionable sauce. Well, this is the hottest take I think I've got on me, right? New York pizza, it doesn't touch their own. And that is the hell. Giuseppe, Giuseppe, Giuseppe. I'll die on. I tell you what, the cons don't even have garden. I don't know. <laughs> the crusts I'll die that hill before I die that hill his father before him died that hill the whole fucking him was dead that hill <laughs> well yeah when you walk past some place they're like it's a dollar a slice or something it's it's not gonna be hot shit like is it no but even like you well, know gonna, like a the kind of like you know the, the better places whatever like you know it, it is don't get me wrong it is good right but it's still <laughs> it's still not like you know I don't know, maybe it is a thing of because that's what we grew up with and that's what we're used to. Like, any sort of differentiation, you don't really appreciate it as much. But I was just like, the fucking, you know, no, I, pizza I, ram was better than this shank. <laughs> just help me shout it. Yeah. Still haven't got a free pizza on that gaff. But here, um, you know what I noticed in America? This is legit. The this I actually went to this place when we stayed in West Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Flags. And uh, I had heard... Like Andrew Santino referenced this place. He goes, "That's where we like to go for brunch." Now, after the fact, like I just went to this place by chance, but it, it turns out it's like quite a fancy brunch spot. It's like their general merchants, right? And it was fucking absolutely fine. Yeah, it was abs- It was just fucking normal. But I think it's like, I think it's different shit. Like, if they cook something in like plain oil. Instead of like butter, like good butter, not the white, not sort of pret stick butter you get yeah, in America, yeah. white shit, not yeah. like good butter. Nothing's like seasoned or anything. So I got like some fucking, you know, biscuits and gravy with a fucking egg on it and all. And it was just absolutely bland as fuck. Like, yeah. It wasn't like finished properly. Again, didn't have a lunch that was as good as fucking General Merchants. Yeah. You know what I mean? The place is fucking banging. Seed? Got that seed bowl one Seed's day and you're, and you're like, I've had, had fucking nothing but Asian food for the last. Yeah. There's loads of places, you know. We took Tom the Bear to fucking Lee Garden near Killed Us All. <laughs> I absolutely, I, t- I, I do not know what I did. I, you know, one of them things where like you're writing something and someone says a thing and you write the word they just said and you're like, why did I write that? Or you text someone says something and you, yeah, yeah. 
I don't know what the fuck happened. Like I was filling in the wee dim sum form, and I, 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 right. <laughs> like you're an Argos. I, literally, it's the Argos <laughs> of fucking chicken feet. I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> it's the Argos of Chinese food. But I'm like taking all these things, and it was like right, the wee prawn dumplings times two or three or whatever. And then literally, like I'm taking this last thing that said mince ball or something, and I'd never even tried it before. And Someone must have said, like, oh, I have to leave at four o'clock. And I ticked this thing and wrote four. <laughs> and I, I had already ordered a mountain of shit. And they just kept bringing it out. And then the guy brings out these two tall stacks of, like, big, fat mince ball things. Yeah. And they were rotten to. And he goes, you ordered these? And I went, eh, no, I don't think so. And he comes back with a thing, like, eh, you did. Yeah. You did. And he just set them on the table. And I was just like, and it, meanwhile, it, I feel like everybody around is just going, like, you know, what are these fat bastards ordering? It yeah. was just absolutely way See, there's too a much psychology to that though too, because like if you're at an actual menu where there's pictures and all, you get to see the feed there and then, whereas whenever it's just text like that, Aye. you're like, oh, it doesn't sound lovely actually. Yeah, for the fuck. Keep it on there, the fuck. Also, you it's know. not, you know, like you might look at the price and be like, oh, that's five ninety five, but then you tick three anyway. So oh. you're sending a 15 quid and then you, you order seven of them and you're like, oh, this is three? I think the time we went, there was like 16 boxes filled. I mean, it's, it seems to be my thing now, is like if there's a guest on the podcast, I go, go Lee Gordon. No. And absolutely nearly bury them with the fucking, it took Mike Rice there, he couldn't believe it. Yeah. Fucking Jesus, hell. Lad, the Jesus, feet. lad, fucking. Yeah. Wouldn't get chicken feet like that back on fucking home. Like. Yeah, is there seven of us joining us or what? Yeah. No, it's just for me and you, player. Yeah. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Get it in there, me just sitting there like a f just fat Yakuza member. I don't yeah. want mixing up all my genres there, but you know what I mean. Uh. I'm just sitting there on the table. I also went on a, a hinge date that wasn't good. What's hinge now? Hinge, so, you know, every dating app now, they have Sucked to have the some sort end. of a USP to it. So with Tinder, the main complaint was it was full of creepy dudes, so they made Bumble, where the woman could speak first. Then the main complaint with Bumble is that there wasn't any actual conversation happening. So Hinge was like, right, we're going to have like wee prompts and all this here. And like you tell a wee bit about yourself in a profile, and then that can start off conversation on there. So I went on a hinge date with this girl. We went to this like pizza place, right, that she picked bougiest pizza spot I've ever been in my life pizza was shite full of truffle oil no good no meat face either so they bring down the pizza it's like on one of them I know, you're like it was it was all fucking bubbly bread and fucking <laughs> prosciutto and rocket and fucking <laughs> truffle oil lol I eh, it again. where's the it. fucking pep where's the miscellaneous meatballs <laughs> where, where the fuck's the garlic mayo <laughs> uh, we have ranch also garlic mayo about the crack then basically yeah so they bring us down in these elevated plates and it was kind of awkward to be honest like um you know with not much crack out of either of us to be honest and we were just kind of sitting there they bring down the pizzas and we both to kind of you know out of awkwardness both grabbed the slice immediately and went to bite it you know whenever you eat pizza too quick it's too hot we both made that sound like the yeah you know and i could just hear her vagina close across the table i was like well this is it now abort mission I her she heard you and her vagina closed. Yeah. And you heard her go Yeah. And you were fucking knocking the other side of the table. <laughs> Pizza. Oh. Yeah, because they always talk about oh it's not great for first date food. No, it's not. What's good first date food? Nuggets? A good a good first date, I think, is Italian's quite good. I oh. think. For a first date. Slurping up you know? spaghetti and all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that carbonara and <laughs> you know. Carb load you up. That's it. And then uh Bar that. It'd be though. funny if she was just horsing meatballs into here and you're like, oh, no way in later. <laughs> Ramen is my favorite, but that's terrible. <laughs> or, like if I took a dog. If the date goes well. I'd have to. Have <laughs> you got a ramen no bother? <laughs> yeah, ramen's terrible. Yeah, that'll that'll smash all the fucking all the doors down straight away. Like, oh yeah, definitely. Just be like, listen, we're going, we're both going to be a fucking mess here. Yeah, get this bed ball. Yeah, that's a that's a you're deep in a relationship kind of you know cuisine. Cuisine, cuisine is ramen. Yeah, you can't be bringing a person there like within the first five interactions. No, you got to play it safe. Food on the date's weird anyway, isn't it? Well, it's. It, I think, you know, drinks is the way to go. Because coffee's weird. <laughs> I think the weirdest one is, um, like, uh, like a, oh, do you want to go to this comedy or something? You know what I mean? Do you want to go to the cinema? Like something something real fucking childish. We're just like, let's let's go on a date, but we're just going to sit beside each other awkwardly. Yeah, but see, that's terrible then, because it's like, you know, you're not really... So would you get to know each other before and after the comedy show? And I actually think you get to know someone very well if yeah. you bring them to a comedy show. Like, I've, like what I've, they're I've, laughing at. There's, yeah, there's been a few first dates in Lavery's, like, and, mm -hmm. and when you're MC and you're like, 
Ja. Yeah. Nice. Thursday. You know, because you do a joke and then she'd be like, oh, she likes better fucking, uh, better the pagan material? Yeah. <laughs> Big mom. Huh? What'd you learn about her? It turns out she's racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone does a real racist joke. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting there like nursing a pine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, fuck no, like, th- fuck no, like, but uh, what do you think is going to happen now between me and this show? What, what could you see happening? Um, I mean... You think the distance will kill it? I, the I, line? I've seen a lot of, or several scenarios with you and female interaction where I'd be like, you know, I'm like this, like, you know, women in 2022 with all that has happened to them of late. I'm like, what, girls don't commit like this. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Girls are perfectly in the, in a position to be like, no, I don't want to see that guy again. No means no fuck off type mm-hmm. thing. And uh, I've seen girls like different people. You know what I mean? Like people messaging you at fucking when you're know, at the fringe, not giving away any names. People mm-hmm. texting you at three in the morning. Oh, I'm having a real row with this person about my accommodation. And I'm like, Arn, might as well be a fucking RSVP <laughs> to the puss. And then this this new one, you know what I mean? You're chatting away back and forward, you know? But it, I mean, like, I'm not listening to your messages, but I hear the tone of voice mm-hmm. in the corner of my ear, mm-hmm. and it's very sexy. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> coming back at her. Yes, laughed. You know what I mean? <laughs> she was like, yeah. This, I don't want to give too much away, you know what I mean? They're sending each other wee songs and all. Uh, you know, gay, but... Uh, <laughs> Arctic Although some, some of them were bangers, uh, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you'll be on to me at two in the morning. Hey, lad, uh, what's a what's a fun indie song that doesn't uh, doesn't suggest too much sexual activity, but is kind of <laughs> raunchy? And you're like, you crack the fingers. Uh, Let me get to work, lad. <laughs> Let me delve into the old NME brain here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but just yeah, she's yeah, she'd be like, yeah, listening to this song. You know this this like she's got this like audiobook voice. Uh-huh. And you're like, Yes, you are <laughs> what are you saying me up for? Send me a rent the two seven three Fuck dick Jesus Christ. I'm sitting here with a mar oh, stiff as a cobra <laughs> Trying to watch little people bike work. I'm trying to watch dwarfs on the TV and they have a rent in front of the mar sticks and fucking love the mind. I'm surprised you got any blonde gold is right? I just had a fucking two two fair youngs and a fucking black bean. <laughs> And a feed of Giuseppe's. Never mind your fucking truffle uh, oil. Uh, I got a meat. I got a meat face coming back up. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! But I who knows? Would you quit? All my friends are calling me a fucking gimp. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, that is funny. It is funny. There was one time she sent me a voice though, and she was like, "She's like, wow, I'm just sitting listening to you, being like, he is pronouncing every word wrong." She's like, wow, every word. That's impressive. Does she mean you have an accent or you're actually saying words wrong? Because I know you're famous. I, uh, I do say a lot of words you wrong. You do like, say a lot of words wrong. But right? I say them with the confidence that she probably thinks it is me being Irish. Like, yeah. is that Gaelic? Yeah. No, I'm just retarded. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to this week's edition of Gaelic or Retarded. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, he's just fucking <laughs> Oh god Yeah I like that song You sent me there Let me dig into the archives I think you said archives one The time. archives Yeah you said archives one time And don't j- jump out of a moving car The fucking ducker The fucking ducker <laughs> <laughs> But I what do you, what, What's your What's your advice for me calling As you know uh, You know You know A more distinguished gentleman <laughs> You know uh, You know A man that's happily married You know what I mean What would you say I think truth one I think what has happened there and you were saying about the Kanye thing and he would never get away with it here you wouldn't get away with that sort of behaviour at home Mm -hmm. so you're over in magical New York you know Mm -hmm. where anything can happen and you're allowed to be a bit sloppy soppy not sloppy Mm -hmm. you're saying every word wrong Uh, you know you can buy her a gratitude journal and not be slagged to death yeah Um, you know I just you know I get get on a flight yeah not too soon with plans but you know what I mean got to me fucking 8 out of 12 pubs tonight here. I'm looking at Sky Scanner here. <laughs> Fucking hand dryer going off in the background. And I, here, I've had a couple of shandies and I just wanted to say, <laughs> up the arse, if you're keen. Mickey just like, fuck up, man, we'll go. We'll go tonight. Fuck up. Send her mind it. 
<laughs> send her a picture of my dick. <laughs> what did I say to you about sending a dick pic or something? You know, like just that. Uh, you know, like <laughs> just go, <laughs> you're telling me this, like you know, plot of a movie thing that's happening in real time, going yeah, back yeah. and forth, and we're driving across a a bridge that was closed off in the rain and all, and then I'm outside with a fucking full mariachi band and uh, <laughs> <laughs> all this like rom com shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just jokingly was like, I send her the dick now. Yeah, I <laughs> send her dick pic now. Okay, I'm a, I'm Don't gonna... send anyone dick pics. No, it's disgusting. Your dick's, and now, your not dicks th- not that nice. You use rotten dicks. Number one, none of these can take a picture. Nah. The, the, I, Niall takes mine. <laughs> Jesus, now right now, if I had said you'd send a mean picture of your hog. Oh, man. <laughs> the cinematography alone in it. Three weeks in Lightroom. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so, you know, I am. <laughs> so, not the wee color chart, no. <laughs> Col- color grading his cock. <laughs> Brushing out the veins. <laughs> Just smooth. <laughs> Keep him in. Keep him in. Get rid of that red eye. <laughs> makes him look angry. Ribbed. Ribbed for her pleasure. Oh Jesus! But I no, I'm I'm an old romantic. Like you know, I'd come on here and chat about blurt and all the rest. But you know, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, talking about blurt and the other fellas. Uh, no, it's it's magical. I mean, it's it's one of them things when you're uh, you know when you're an old man like me, married and all. Uh, it warms your heart or it turns No, you, you go like, ah, fucking <laughs> the joys of being young, you know, <laughs> to be young again. Not that that ever happened to me, but to be, oh, Jesus, romantic, yeah, you yeah. know. That's what you should be doing, man, you know, be out there. No, it's nice. Go out in the world. Don't matter if you're fucking ready or of money or not, go skint. Well, yeah, I wasn't too far off it by the second month out in New York. Don't matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. When, it, when you're on that hill dying. Yeah, that's it. They'll not be counting your money. The hill's coming, you know. But sure, you adapt. So, for example, the bars out there, dare as fuck, the tipping system, obviously, you never really know what you're paying for. I'm not above getting a few brown bags and drinking on the train. Oh, yeah. I don't mind. I love the way that that's, that's how your, your survival tips are, how to drink, not to how to eat or anything of that shit. Exactly. I used to do, <coughs> I used to do a coin to turn myself, a bodega crawl, Yeah. where if I was going somewhere that I knew the booze was going to be expensive, I would get four stops off before. I put my headphones on, maybe I'd call someone, have a wee yarn, or I'd put on some music, and I would go into a bodega, I'd buy a tall boy, which is basically like two pints in a can, I'd buy that, drink that walking down the street, having a chat there, listening to a bit of Motown, and as soon as that was done, I'd go into the next one. I'd just keep going until I got to whatever venue I was going to, I'd, and a lot of half chinned. Just arrive at the place, blasted already? Well, there was one time I did misjudge it heavily, because I was like, you know, you forget that everywhere there's open at like five o'clock in the morning. No what? So I, I was for, you know, the theatre. But uh, so, you know, I was like, I landed down and it was like 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, right, perfect. I'll land in here, like kind of half canned. I go and everyone's just starting and I'm fully pitched. Mm-hmm. So you're doing that kind of thing, you know, you used to do when you'd come home to your man. Nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> As long as you're in New York for yourself. Where's the toilet? Where was the toilet? Oh. And then poke. <laughs> <coughs> Oh god! But I was uh, smoking that wacky packy too, and oh, uh, doing feeding mushrooms and all. Just, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! No portobello's up there, eh? No. <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> them things kick in too. Hey, holy fuck! Mushrooms! Like, oh my god! I, I'm yet to do mushrooms. I think I I'd love to do mushrooms. With you. I think we'd have a great time. Cheers, bro! We go to the pictures, you know. Now you you get on them too. Mushrooms. We'll all see God. Okay. It's great. It is. It is great crack. We'll listen to indie music. Yes. You know, we'll, yes. put, we'll put on some ar- early Arctics. Yes. Get the shrooms in. Get the Arctics on. It's a party. Get the tops off. The fun, uh, This is another voyage for you. Just discovering music that everybody knows already. Oh, yeah. Have you heard of a band for fighters? I ended up venturing into the old kill switch and gauge there. Some band all the year. Do you like them? Kieran Bartlett's actually dad o- used to love them. Kieran Bartlett's only band that he listens to. Yeah, it's the only thing he's got on his phone. Yeah, uh, because Kieran's such a, a gentleman, we lovely like man, and then you get into his car and he's just blaring this, <laughs> yeah, like death metal. And then like when you see him walk, you just hear tiptoe through the tulips, you know, and he just loves the most <laughs> hardcore <laughs> shit. <laughs> tiptoe. That is haunting to be playing over. Uh, put your headphones on. I think they became disconnect. There we go. 
This is the Arctic Monkeys' best song. Five miles. Half day. Do, 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 do. Not monetized. Never getting cash. You see these boys now? Arctic? Arctic Monkeys? I'll do that. <laughs> Sorry, I was deep in their early, early tips. This is their fucking early tip. Aye, no, You're listening sure. to all the fucking new shit. What's that bonus cut? Steady, that's a little... Like, what are their new songs? They're all fucking wispy, like... Stuff that never happened to them, you know what I mean? I mean, I kind of like a fucking... Well, see, that's why you can't cinema. do too... <laughs> that's why you can't do too much mushrooms. Because then you do cook the goose. You're just making shit up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on a horse and cart. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Alex, bro. What was the song they had where you just walked in the shot and sang it down a microphone and then walked off? That was a great video. Very simple. Where are they from? Cork. <laughs> I want to be yours, boy. Where are they from? Le- Leeds? Not sure. Probably. Oh, Jesus, no. We're letting the side down now. Oh, God, let's find out. We'll have to finish it now. How long have we been talking for now? 50 minutes. Oh, well, fucking peg my mouth. Uh, where did you get any questions? Oh, what did I? I'll get to them just now. What's your drink of choice today when we go on the weddle? I'm gonna start off with a few pints of stout and then I will aggressively move into uh Jameson and Ginger territory, Sheffield, of course. <laughs> <laughs> then we take the short ferry ride <laughs> to Foxville, <laughs> aka the E <E-tap>. Town. <laughs> What is it about that hotel? I, 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 that should just be called the Spaffin. Because it's literally just <laughs> the only reason anybody's getting oh. a room in there is to throw a live one around the place. <laughs> Anytime I talk about jizz in this podcast, it just sets him off like a wee boy. Every day, I, I, I had a girl, I had a girl in the front row of Lavery's one night, and I was like, "What are you doing?" She goes, "Oh, I work at a hotel." And I was like, "What hotel is it?" And she goes, "The Gal Gorm." And I was like, "Are people just skating about on jizz in there?" Because <laughs> that's all you see, like you know what I mean? It's like people fucking, oh, we just got engaged, or we just did this, or on a wee date up here. People yeah. are just, you know, they take a photo of a cocktail, and then they're just in that ice room, just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just slapping cheeks, <laughs> afternoon tea, and just. Burping the worm on someone's oh, head in a Jesus hot tub. Christ. I wouldn't get in a hot tub. They should do one of them tests. You know, like they did at the hair dryer and the fucking apple greens, and they're like, "This has basically got bubonic plague in it." That'll be the that'll be the fucking hot tub up there. Oh, easy. They would dip the thing in and be like, "Yeah, it's pregnant." It is. It is a relationship milestone for any couple from Northern Ireland. Yeah. Speaking of spaffing, it's like you're willing to spaff about seven hundred quid. Yeah. To have a daiquiri and a second spaff. You've been to the Galgon Spa. No, I've only I've been to Galgoan for afternoon tea, which is quite sad. You yeah, know, not not a lot of spaffing done at that. Uh, spaffing cash. Ah, well, yeah. What you know, you can't have it all. Spa for triangle sandwiches. You know, it's... if I if I go to a spa, I like to go away, f- like way down south somewhere. Yeah, where you don't know anybody. No, I like that. I get that. You know, you been in Galgoan Spa with your missus? Uh, well, my sister got married there, like fucking years ago. So I have been, but not with Freya. Nice. Nice. Sorry. It, 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 every, Sorry. This is the thing. Everything's all right. Do you know what's, what I, what's the cutest date you've ever been on? Like, where are we cute? Can I? Probably that place she's go to down south. Uh, yeah, well, no, I wouldn't say cute. Like, what's cute? Like, just, you know, but, you know. Cute things are like, you know, when you're, you're young and wild and free and no one has any money and, you you know, you're like, oh, we're having, we're having two fucking three litres of cider here and a... Behind this skip in yeah. the sunshine or something, you know, that, that's like cute. When you're gonna, when you actually grow up and you're like, let's go for a weekend. What are you having? Yeah. What are you having? The prawns. Yeah. You know, it's not that cute. Yeah. Cute things. I'm trying to think. Like you know, like when we went over to America, to LA, to the time we met up with you uh-huh. in LA, that first couple of days in like Santa Monica, where you get to just you know walk around with a big sun hat on and fucking go to some wee diner and have. You know, on the on the veranda and have a wee thing. You're like, this is this is cute. Shit like that. You know what I mean? That is bliss. You know what I mean? That's very bliss. Yeah, but I don't think I think the things like that you should get that in increments. I don't think you should live there because then you become numb to that kind of. You know, that is a nice like kind of fuck off and do that. But I don't think you should live there. You know, 
I don't think anyone should after living in New York for two months. I don't think anyone should live there. Like it's not a like it's act. I've, I've heard a comedian says before in a podcast, it's the only city that's actively trying to get ready. Yeah. The rent prices increase. The wages don't go up. <laughs> Any fucking place you get has bed bugs or some shit like that. Like it's an insane place to live. Like it just seems like. LA and there are the places where you like go to make it happen because mm-hmm. you know like you hear about all those New York comedians who do well for themselves they move you know upstate or whatever they don't stay in the city like you go get a fucking actual house that you can walk around yeah have you seen this TikTok thing where people are, the guy goes up to people and he's like hey how much do you pay for your rent in, in New York yeah and the guy's like 800 or like $1,800 and, and he's like can I see it and he's like yeah and then some of them are like very cute, you know what I mean? Like we small place that's immaculate and tidy. But the guy, I mean, the guy's literally, you could be having a wank in bed and like, you know, put the kettle on. Like people, there's no there's no room in the place. People are begging to be murdered. Yeah. Bringing some cunt into your house. But I think, I think. My uh, mom be fuming. I know. Here you go, fuck this <laughs> is. <laughs> I'm tidy to fuck up here and fucking, why you know I'm I'll press the state. <laughs> Yesterday's fucking toast in the bed and stuff. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, no one's walking up to you in Oma Main Street going, how much do you pay for your rent no. in your mom's house? I, I don't. Can, can have a look. <laughs> Every, it's 25 minute walk. The coming. weekly shop, that's it. Uh, but uh, yeah, some of them are dead cute and whatever, but you're just like, you know, if you if you had no mates in that city and you're just in that wee box. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. the world is so big outside you, you're just like fucking. And even if you do have mates, like it's so fucking big that like, you know, each borough is like its own city. Yeah. And like, if you have, say you live in Brooklyn and you have a mate that lives in fucking, like, I don't know, the Bronx, for example, that's a hour and a half to get to. Like, that'd be the same as like me having a mate that lived in, coming from Oma to go up to fucking Hollywood or something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Worse. So like, it's, it's insane. Like, it's a tough place to live. What's the longest, like, sort of, what do they call it? The tube? The subway. The subway. Like, how much? What's the longest subway you took to get there, please? Well, I would take the Long Island Rail to get in um, <laughs> most days. So, if I was staying in Long Island, it's a 50 minute train. 50 minute train? 50 bro? minute into Penn Station, and then from Penn Station, wherever you were going to. But the longest subway I took was probably like 45, 50 minutes still. And that was going from like Brooklyn to, say, like one of the main comedy clubs. Oh. You know? That's crazy. It's yeah, just so you big. Do. Like. But then it's weird because I think you're gonna vote, man. Yeah, I'm fucking rough in here. Like fuck. Um, I think distance on a train is like it passes by the quickest because you can sit there and you can read Aye. a book or you can listen to something. Or, Fifty in traffic or something, you lose your mind. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's in the train you, and you see the stops as well. So there's that thing. You know, it's not as bad. But it was cool. It was cool being out there and like getting a getting a wee glimpse of like behind the curtain of that circuit. Uh-huh. Like there was one night I got to hang out with uh, a comedian and I watched him do like three rooms back to back. And I was just like, fucking hell, like it's, you know, it's kind of just there, like, you know, cause I remember even doing a spot at New York Comedy Club and I was imposter syndrome to the dick. Cause everyone I was on the bill with had a, you know, hugely successful podcast in America and like one that I'd listened to. Mm. So they had me on like the middle of the show doing 10. And you kind of have to almost, in your mind, like, delete all the hype and all the fucking folklore about a venue and be like, here, at, at the end of the day, it's kind of a shithole. And also I, it's yeah. four walls. I, yeah, I think I think that's very true. You know, you know? Like people are like, you walk into the comedy store, you can smell the laughter. And you're like, that's pish that you're smelling. Yeah, and Pryor's cocaine fucking stains are still but, there. But I think, yeah, just funny, just funny, isn't it? Every it definitely, night. it filled me up with a lot of confidence because like, I, whenever I was going out there, I was like, fuck, you know, even though I had performed in America before, I was like, you know, am I right wise moving out here? Like, this is like- Am I right wise moving out here? Am I right wise? This know? is the fucking Arctic Monkeys for a week. <laughs> am I right wise? And then uh, after two months there, I was like, no, I feel like I could take a swing at this. Why the fuck not? You know? Of course. I was talking to Colin Terrell said like he goes if, if you're coming over to see McCann he goes you'll get a ton of gigs because you're visiting yeah he's like if you're visiting everyone will put you on yeah but if you're living there and you're another fucking you know crab in the in the bucket mm-hmm. he's like that's when it starts to get tough to get gigs well London's the same like <clears throat> London now I'm going to visit in January and I've got more gigs lined up for a week than I would have had nearly three months living out there mm. you know so it kind of is that like once you get in your foot in the door and you 
know enough people you can just like come home and fly out whenever you want and you'll be have a stacked diary for like a month or two there you go you don't have to move we can continue with our plans that we <laughs> Heading to New York City in February, what's McCann's top three recommendations of things to do or eat there? McCann's top three recommendations. Michael Jardine, shout out. Right. Top three recommendations. What are you eating? Ass and pastrami? If you're looking for a night out, there is a place that just plays hefty hip-hop and R&B all night. And it's called Friends and Lovers. If you want to get grinded on by some doll, that's the place to go. And then second up, I would say for food... Get a halal, guys, but get it from a cart. Don't go into the physical restaurant. There'll be carts spluttered all over the city. Get that. It's very. It's just literally chicken and rice with a bunch of salad. But the sauce they put in there, blow the dicky. And then third, what would I say? Go, just go do something weird. You know, go see something weird. There was a night I was supposed to go to a dwarf strip club. Uh-huh. I never bothered, but I wish I had a, you know, to experience that. Take that in. Save that for when I'm there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, go do something weird. You know, there's a pile of fucking weird shit going on. We went to the crypto cannabis church. Mm-hmm. That was mad. You know, everyone was in there just smoking reefer, selling mushrooms. Totally illegal. This was in Long Island. And uh, then next thing you know, this guy was like puffing this thing. Like you could have played fucking snooker with it. And he was just blaring away at it. And then we were all sitting there. It was the first time I got high in a while. Because I would just get, I, when I smoke weed, usually I just get really paranoid and like don't feel comfortable at all. And uh, having a great time. And then this cunt that was with us gets up and goes, all right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call the night. I'm going to get out of here. And then literally, we just hear this fucking car crash. The cunt that went outside, got in his car, moved it about two foot in front of him and crashed into the car in front of him. There you are. And that's why you shouldn't smoke reefer and drive, you know. Yeah. But uh yeah, go do some weird shit. That's the that's the main thing I would say. Do some weird shit. Stuff some money down there. And go to any bodega deli. The boys over there look after you. There was a halal guys beside us in Kensington where me and um, McCarney stayed, and I was uh, we we missed it. It closed by the time I got back from the gig. I was furious. It is very good, but get out of the carts for the. And then real we and then we ju- then we just went in the KFC, and it was so London where like there was just. A, a coked up sort of business guy getting arrested by cops yeah. and then someone coming in dressed as Santa and it was, it was very like I'm in the city now you know oh go to Winson Bakery in Brooklyn they have a chicken and waffles in there that'll blow the baggie there you go there you are what about Katz's Deli have you been there trash it's there, much of a muchness yeah it's yeah. it's one of them places that's so much hype around it and then you get there and you're like you can get any. You get better meat in the fucking spar deli. Once again, <laughs> once again, yeah, more, yeah. Shout out, shout out to the spar. Uh, but yeah, I've watched vi- videos from those cats deli thing, and they're like they're chopping up all the meat, and it looks all succulent and whatever. And then they just jam up between two stinking bits of bread and a bit of mustard, and you're like, "Where's all the, where's all the bits, man?" That's the best part. That whenever you go up to order, they like throw you like you're a dog, like wee bits of the meat. That's lethal. Mm. And then you sit down, and you get the actual sandwich stinking. Not stinking, but not great. Yeah. You know, you're like, give me a nice brioche, you know, lather it up with some shit, you tramps. Naomi Mitchell, turn historic events into porn. <laughs> Shout some historic events at us now. And then what have you got in the archives? Uh, World War Two. Moon landing. <laughs> moon landing strip. <laughs> Did it ever happen? What else? That's all I got. <laughs> What's the historical events? I don't know, Henry the some shit. <laughs> killed eight dolls. Didn't he? He read like eight dolls and killed them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, historical events. What else happened in history? Uh, JFK assassination. Ah, uh, that was the paneling. Head on the bonnet, it's called. <laughs> the, the porno. Uh... <laughs> oh, the JFK would just be a donkey punch, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the wife just scraping his head back together on the thing. What you want? What a day. What a day. Like uh, That's what his wife said when he got shot in the head. Just what a day. John, Jacob, your head's all over the place. What's a historic event? Oh, Nine, Johnny 9 11. Kennedy. 900 level lo- loads. <laughs> Nine loads, 11 dolls. Put them on. Twin boners. 
<laughs> I shout them out now, listen. <laughs> Spunk can't melt jet beans. Or still beans. The plague. <laughs> the plague. <laughs> That's my sex life. <laughs> In at number five, William Shakespeare is born. Oh, yeah? To queef or not to queef? <laughs> <laughs> that is stinking. Guy Fox. Hamlet. And, uh, <laughs> <guns. laughs> Two Hamlets hanging over. <laughs> what about us for the history, bro? Yeah, what <laughs> happened? Man. Just like an old senile man. <laughs> That's our new podcast history. What happened? <laughs> uh, oh Jesus Christ! Coming on number three. Ice Age. <laughs> some show. Slice Age. The squirt is some crack. Slice Age. I'll play <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> hot mic. Hot mic. Hot mic. Slice Age? Question mark. Oh fuck. Directed by the Weinstein Company. Uh. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Oh God! Oh. Oh, you wouldn't have got this in New York now. You know you wouldn't have got this kind of carry on history. Uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Ah, uh-huh. the Berlin Wall. Ah, uh-huh. uh, 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 well. one of them here just says "gay marriage." <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> done and done. Fantastic. I live with two gay lads for the last two months. They are great crack. Homophobic cunts are missing out on some quality crack. I tell you. Most homophobic people are just like... Dumb. Scared that they're... What's that? That they are gay? They're, they're, they like the taste of dick? Yeah. Uh... No, great, great crack. I was just sitting with him. We were drinking fucking Prosecco, watching RuPaul's Drag Race. Great time. Yeah. Great time. Yeah. And they're horny hooers too. And it's, oh yeah, for sure. Jesus like, Christ. We were hanging on our mates at uni. He was gay. And I mean like turbo gay. Yeah, yeah. Sexually aggressive predator. Yes. Gay. And, uh, you know, we would just be sitting around. We were in his house and there's like five of us, four guys, five guys, one of the guys gay. <laughs> And he just got up in the old grey sweatpants and was just like, I'm absolutely stiff as a cobra here, I have to go. And he just snipped. I think it was just being in the room with four other dudes, you know? That's how I feel after I do the podcast. Guy was just bricked up. I'm just fucking, do you ever do a podcast and you get up and you're like, full swamp in my fucking ass right now? Oh yeah, these, the, I mean, these seats are from Ar- Argos and they're plastic, bro. We're going to get pneumonia from my own fucking good sweat. Oh, pneumonia from the good sweat. Favourite stall at the Christmas market? <laughs> The Asian y Chinese one that they've got now. Although the staff at the pancakes. <laughs> Attractive. Wait, uh, Tesco and Dungannon? Up not, there? It's not that level. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Tesco's in a while. I don't know what their current st- st- situation <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> Advice on living in America for a short period of time, as I'll do. I'm doing Camp America soon. Oh, uh, yes. You're going to have a great time with that. Thoughts on Elon Musk. Sorry. Thoughts on Dave Chappelle bringing Elon Musk out on stage? Did you see him try to say I'm rich, bitch? No, let's bring Smartest it up. man in the world and... Can't talk. Elon, I'm rich. I am rich, bitch. At a certain point when Elon's like, I work 19 hours a day, and you're like, shut up. Yeah. No, you don't, you fucking idiot. This is a terrible video. <laughs> Cheers. Oh. I oh, fuck they bleeped it. But he butchers it like. I think the crowd just booed him too, so they kind of, you know, to mask that, they just blared air horns. Why would they boo him? He's an evil, he's like a evil uh, tycoon. I think he does more good than anyone He's else a, in his position. You know, I don't know the full crack, to be honest, but Twitter's not happy with him. And 
Why are Twitter not happy with him? I don't know. Well, I think sorry, the people of Twitter aren't happy. But I think they're trying to turn on him because he was literally trying to do some good out of it. Mm. He was trying to be like Twitter was used to affect like, um, and the DMs and stuff were used to affect elections, and he wanted to out that. So they're probably they're probably just doing that thing where they're like, we don't want anyone knowing the real truth, so we're just gonna call them all the fucking pedos of the day and everything to try and shit on them. Yeah. He might be doing good, you know what I mean? But also, just make cars, bro. Do you know what I mean? All these billionaires get in their position where they're like, let me go mad. Also, you know, maybe we don't have to go to Mars or whatever just yet. Maybe you just get some homeless people off the street in LA. But that's the only option you have as a billionaire. Either go to Mars or you fuck kids. <clears throat> well, there you go. You know? And that's why I don't have billions. Pick a lane. Who's a lane? <laughs> Uh, oh, will, will Will McKegney ever be in the pod? Yeah, I've tried to get him on a few times, but he, the, the fucking silly bitch has a job. <laughs> he has a fucking actual job. Fucking agent. Um, is McCann giving up the vapes for twenty twenty three? Yes, actually, I am. Yeah, we're, we'll all give it up. Cyberball me too if you see me with one in twenty twenty three. I don't need this shit anymore. What's your perfect McDonald's order? We just had a McDonald's, but it's only purely because I, we're going on the piss, and I was like, gotta eat something. I'll be honest, I think it's hard to beat the chicken selects. Chicken selects are, yeah. Very decent, and then, you know, you get to fry them, and uh, an old Fanta. If you're feeling really cheeky, maybe get them cheese melt uppers in the go. You know, be fond of them now. If I'm being a real fat slut, I go big tasty meal, and the selects on the side. That's my fat bitch. Cargo jeans. Yeah, cargo jeans. But yeah, that's the thing about McDonald's. You can do it sensibly and you can do it irresponsibly. Well, know? when you're drunk, it's very hard to... Yeah. <laughs> you ever be drunk in a McDonald's? You've got the fucking screen. You're just... You know, <laughs> like a, it's like a fucking game. Do you know what I'm dying to try? I've seen some guy try this. You, you get the filet fish mm -hmm. and you get bacon on it. You know you can select all the bits? You get bacon on it and extra tartar sauce. And apparently it's banging. Nothing will beat the McDonald's we got in LA. Oh God! Where it was like that fucking like that was that'll happen again today. We were banjaxed at about five p.m. Yeah, we're like get a fuck. What is it, lucky bag? Yeah, get it in the fuck. Like it was like uh, it was like literally six burgers, like fucking four hangs of chips, a McRib, nuggets, a McRib but then but there, then also like crack. a McMuffin and pancakes. Oh why? It had all the breakfast shit in it too. That was a wipeout that day, wasn't that it? That was drinking in the in the baking heat. And, yeah. Uh, Get a McDonald's and it's then. Great crack, fast and Santa Monica. You couldn't read it. Your core memory there, but we need to do something like that this year. Whether it's when you go to New York and we do something real scummy in New York. Oh yeah. Although New York suits it a bit better. Yeah. But we'll have to. We'll have one of those moments where like, ah, oh, boys, where else would you get it? Give me like two months to get in there and fucking sauce everything out. Get a couple of nice wee spots where we can get some fucking noodle soups and those bitch. And then two months, out. bro. You'll you'll have about two hours. Yeah, I'll be. I'm on the fucking I'm on the plane behind you. Yeah, <laughs> say nothing. Uh, have you ever thought about uploading YouTube Shorts? The engagement on those is absurd. <laughs> um, yeah, I've thought about it, but you know what I mean. How many more fucking uploads of it a day around here? I should. What's the length of a YouTube Short? Same as a real, isn't it? Like 120? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I might throw something up there, you know what I mean? Um, at the end of the year, do you ever just sit back and reflect and be like, yeah, I done good? Any big travel plans or holidays for next year? Do you ever sit back and be like, I done good? I did that yesterday. And oh. I think I think it's very important. What I was doing was I was making a wee video of, I was clearing up my camera roll. And I was like, I should have done this every year. Just take all the camera roll footage and throw it together, put a wee tune over it, and then upload that on your Instagram and you can go back and look at that. Yeah, well, that's that's the the way I, the only way I'm able to do it was like make those highlights of the years. Yeah, and take all the wee stuff. But what it actually takes is <clears throat> someone who's not in my immediate group to like comment on it because mm. they're like looking from the outside. So like, obviously, you're just day to day going through your shit and you have things coming up and you complete them and you fucking move on or whatever. And then someone from the outside says something so like i was talking to gordon rochford from those conspiracy guys going back and forward and whatever and he goes fucking some year you've had and he was like fucking arenas supporting kevin hart fucking this and the fringe and blah blah and he went through it all yeah and i seen it in text and i was like fuck that is 
That is some ricochet. The boys went to Austin. Boys went to Austin. You know what I mean? So it was like, it took someone else observing it from the outside to go like, fair play to you. 2022, I think, for me personally, was a return to form. Because 2020 was shite beyond belief, obviously, for most people. <clears throat> 2021, kind of moved out to London, was enjoying it, but kind of found out it wasn't really for me. And then 2022, moved back home, sort of set the plans in motion to get this visa, and then dipped my toes into New York and was like, right, I feel confident now what I want to do. Yeah. I think, like, the, the, the lockdown sort of thing felt like you're just in a big tank of water filling up, and then someone just opened a trap door, and you go, and you're just everything's coming at you again you're doing everything you're booking everything you're doing this fucking all over the place you're, but it's not really like enjoyable because it all just opened and fucking you went at it whereas i think now that that's come to an end 2023 is going to be more of like a calculated what would i like to do instead of i'm just doing everything because it's coming at me type yeah thing. that's where i'm at yeah you know what i mean i think it's gonna be a good year sir i, I think it's gonna be a good year because you know you never know what's coming up but at least at least there's no like carrot being dangled in front of your face like the lockdown times so you're like it's gonna be a week it's gonna be two weeks it's gonna be another month there's not you know very unsteady yeah 2023 hopefully will be a bit more not predictable but a bit more you can plan a bit more you know what i mean you can you can make your own fucking make your own luck um let me see any big plans or holidays this year i'm gonna go visit you and New York, fuck yeah! Make a real scene over there. I'm gonna, um, I probably will fucking get a chat about organizing like Australia and and um, some gigs in America for for legitness. Um, I'm dying to do that Vietnam trip. Just the boys go to Vietnam and film it. That'd be sick. McCarney, That'd be great. McCarney in Vietnam, trying to eat fucking all sorts of blood soup. Um. What's both of your albums slash movies of the year? Oh, what a great question. Ooh. I don't know what fucking movies I've seen this year. Yeah, same actually, now that I think about it. What's your movie of the year now? Banshees of my asshole? Uh, might be a bit obvious, but that everything, everywhere all at once. How that was it? a banger. It won, It's got nominated for like every fucking... Yeah, it deserves it. The film's film. a trip. Like, you did, you'd really like it. It's great. So See, I keep having chats like this and then just forgetting to actually watch these goddamn things. No, it's great. Too busy watching MILF fuck their sons in Mexico. Um, Blender the Lost Tapes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sundance. Sundance. Um, <laughs> albums? What would have been your albums of the year, man? Fucking hell. Mm, J.I.D.'s and Everland Story was very good. Okay. Uh, okay. Steve Lacey's album was very good. Mm, 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 mm. I'm trying to think what what the fuck new shit I've been listening to this year. Um, I've been listening to a lot of old shit this year. You can't beat the Temptations, boy. Hard to beat. I go see them again tomorrow. I have nothing to offer in any of these things. This is a problem, Spotify. No, you just I could tell you the song that I've listened to the most. <laughs> Movies, I have no idea. I can't even remember what the fuck I've seen this year. But that is a shout, that film. Actually, album of the year. Fear of the Dawn. Jack White. Nice. I did listen to that a lot when it came out. And it's very, it's a strong album. Pusha T's album. Pusha T's album. I put that in there too. Yeah, That was yeah. great. The best thing I think I've seen this year was probably Chappelle in Dublin. Oh yeah, that was great. That was a spectacle. Yeah, I've seen some some amount of comedy too. Yeah, uh, seen Jim Gaffigan, seen fucking Louis in Belfast. All fun. Chappelle was great though. Um, watched Stuart Lee's tornado last night. It's good, crack. Enjoyed it. Um, have you ever been to Bingo Loco? Think he's would be brilliant hosting. You did host it. I did host it in Dublin one time. If right? you're gonna go to any of those Bingo ones, you gotta go to Bongo's Bingo. That's the OG. Yeah. Don't be going to Bingo Logo. Good crack. Get paid to go on the lash. Truth bomb. Throw dildos at people. <laughs> uh, let me just see if I can pick a, a nice question out. Uh, 
What's the one thing about Christmas that gives you that nostalgic feeling? The ham. The ham's the main event. Every year. Ham? Yeah. Um... Or just like seeing the nephews and nieces get their Santa gifts. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool, yeah. I like that. What's the most Christmassy thing? Um, it's it's usually like, a co- again, it's a vibe, isn't it? I was telling you, it's the first time we've had a tree in eight years. Oh, why? Came home, fucking Christmas trees up, couldn't believe it. Jesus Christ. It's nice having it, you know, like you have ah, it in you the got, background when you have the TV on. You have to have it, like, it's paying the hole and all that shit, but you gotta have it. It's a nice wee thing now. Morning has these lights up outside the house, which twinkle, and there's a yellow sort of hue off them. So when you put the blinds down, it looks like there's a fire outside the house, which will catch Class. you off guard all the time. The fuck, the Americans go ham with the fucking Christmas decorations. Good. You go past some of the houses in Long Island, it's like fucking absolutely mental. Any nostalgic Christmas feelings now? Any, <laughs> here now, any feelings at all? <laughs> nope. <laughs> No. What do you like about Christmas now? Is it an old bustling bar full of whiskey? Uh, not even. Probably just food, yeah. I like the, the old turkey now. I, I like a bit of turkey. Everyone shits on it. I like a turkey now. It's because everyone overcooks the fuck out of it. They do. They, oh, oh, they murder play it. Play that bomb quick. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do though. They're so they're they're so scared of it being half ra in the middle. Yeah, my, I'm running my sister's house. I would run my sister's house, and everyone piled in. She's like, "Hey, can you see us?" And all, she's, and just like grab me a shirt. She goes, "Colin, come down to the kitchen, now, please." And she comes down. And she's like, "I fucking this is a disaster." <laughs> 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 and you know what I mean? You know, old fucking Gina to get us over here. You know, I'm, pre- I'm quite proficient. Christmas is high dose central. I, I think <laughs> I, <laughs> high dose central. <laughs> it is, uh, but it shouldn't be. She takes these things. Uh, there was no turkey. She had ch- no, like a chicken olive, like a chicken breast stuffed with bacon around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And she goes, take that out. No, she goes, get the electric, <laughs> get the electric thermometer out there. And I check it. And I was like, Rachel, <laughs> these are murdered. <laughs> I was like, these are fucking. I assure you, this is cooked. Just double check it out. Ah. <coughs> It's fucking cremated. I dare say my law make the Christmas dinner in the air fryer this year. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> you been fucking putting everything in that here? Should be on TikTok next. How to make a moist turkey? Just putting the Weetabix in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just lost the run of herself in the air fryer. Oh, Jesus Christ. But no, I like, like a good, it is class to having like a pint of Guinness in a bar with, you know, your fucking mates who are usually away during the year or something like that. They come back over for Christmas. You have a few creamy stout. In the local, that's nice too. Yeah, to them, today it'll be nice. Do you know, you know? what's actually? Do you know what's actually? Um, and w- and we're not even having it this year. The Lavery's Christmas do is usually the most festive. I feel. You yeah. Know, Kieran sings the old fucking fairy tale in New York, Christy Moore version, at the end, and all that was always great. And you would have a few drinks after that. It's, it it ain't happening this year, but we are going for drinks today. Yeah. Um, which. We'll go one way or another. Uh, don't know if the McCrispy is the best liner for a stomach. Nah, we'll get uh, we'll get something else in the way. <laughs> I'm gonna eat a loaf of Vita in the way. In. <laughs> just think of them boys, same boys get like twelve Krispy Kremes and just going. <laughs> and then he goes, it's not that much food, and then he just eats it like a burger, Scooby snack, Scooby snack. But like, is is there even a science that like if you eat a fuck ton of bread before you go drinking, you'll not get as drunk? Or it's just you eat something and you're not going to be as bad. You eat something. Like yeah. I, there's plenty of times I've, that's why I don't like going for dinner and drinks because you're kind of stuffed and then you don't really get drunk, but you're like, well, I've had fucking nine pints, like, but I'm not, I could drive home right now. You want a nice balance, you yeah. know, you can't go, I mean, my biggest mistake was when we went to Amsterdam and I smoked weed on an empty stomach, <laughs> and I, which I, I, you're laughing. I didn't, I didn't know it was a real thing. And then Casey was like, oh, it's like, it is like drinking. We're like. It depends, like, if you're knackered and full of caffeine and starving, you'll get high as fucking... <laughs> that was so funny. That was so funny. Because I've, I've never seen you, like, like plastered drunk. It's the most embarrassing moment of my whole life. Like, I've, ne- I've never seen you not in control, if that makes sense. Okay. So to see you in, like, a McDonald's and being like, I have to go home. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was... I was and then, because your, par- your paranoia is just, like, waves oh, yeah. of everything. So I was, like, I was like, boys... You know, like, you might have to take me back here. 
But then I was worrying, like, I don't think anyone believes me. You you would have shit the bed laughing at me on the first night of Skankfest when I overdid it in the shrooms. Aye. Because I was having a great time. And I'm so greedy, like, with any serotonin at all. If I'm like, oh, there's a good time in this, give me 17 of these. Yeah. Like, I'm the same with anything. Fucking, you know, even Vicounts. I have yeah. to eat them till the back it's gone. So, with shrooms, I was like, took a few... Was like having a real nice time. I was like, oh fuck, I'm getting this uh, serotonin spike now. I'm like, everything's great. This is great. I'm having a fucking great time. And then someone was like, do you want some more? And I was like, eat it in the fuck. <laughs> and then I took it and I literally walked to go for a pish. And it was like, you know how you see like- you started slowly flying. Yeah, you know how you see like shroom, <laughs> shroom trips in the films. And you're like, it's not like that. It is like that if you overdo it. Cause I walked to go for a piss and the wall started going, whoa, oh, no. whoa. And I was like, oh no, 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 right? So I went up to call, I went up to calm Terrell and like couldn't, have been, it was like love on the spectrum. I was just like, calm, I've had a really nice time tonight, but I'm gonna go home now because I've done too much drugs. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and then I go to walk out and Skankfest was in this like shopping center. So they had, <laughs> oh God, what a nightmare. They, they had like, <laughs> you're walking through the next. They had the Here escalator my- going downstairs, but the escalator was off. And I was like going down like so slowly, like at there. Yeah. And then there was like three like bros up top. And I could just hear him be like, yo, man, look at that guy. He's fucked up. <laughs> and I, I was just sending me mad. And then, you know, your brain gets whenever you're on fucking drugs. My mind went, hang on. What if this escalator is actually on? But I'm having, uh, I'm hallucinating that it's off. And I think I'm getting to the bottom of this escalator. I'm going to wake up covered in blood and pish. <laughs> And then I get outside and I'm really like sensitive to noises. So there was like an ambulance going, there was guys shouting each other in the street. I seen a rat. I was like, I'm gonna have a fucking (laughs) panic attack, right? So I get on the phone and I call, my my friend Hattie calls me and she's like, she's based in London. She's like, Aaron, how's America treating you? And I was like, Hattie, I don't have time. I was like, I've got 10 minutes until my Uber comes here. I've took a lot of drugs. I just need you to tell me really nice things for 10 minutes. And she went straight into it, fair player. She was like, you're a lovely person. People like being around you. I was like, yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Imagine but, you were just a sociopath and you weren't on drugs. You're just ringing people, going, "I'm on drugs. Tell me your nice things." You're, like, you're one of the best comedians I've ever seen. You're so fun to be around. You're just sitting there. <laughs> so if you if you rang a babe station and they're like chatting dirty, and you're like, "Hang on, I'm gonna send you a link here. Me doing ten minutes of lavery. Can you tell me how good it is?" Ah, oh, you're so funny. It's making me wet. Cheers, love. Can I quote that for a poster? <laughs> but I, we've, I've, I've been there, brother. I've been there. Oh, God, he's been there. Any more? Hold on, let me check. We've got one more question, then we'll get GTF the fuck out of here. Oh! No, we don't. We're getting out of here. We're going on the bus. Um, cheers for listening, folks. Thanks, Aaron, for coming on. Uh, thanks for having me. And here, everyone, you know, fucking enjoy yourself. You know, have a good new year. I hope you all have your hopes and dreams come through. Any final thoughts now? I agree. We're out of here.